For our third application of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, we turn to dynamics. So what do I mean by dynamics? I mean we're going to take a vector v, we're going to apply a matrix A to it, and we're going to apply the same matrix again, and then again, and we're going to see what happens to v as we, you know, as as n goes to infinity, right? As this a to the n v, as as, a, as n goes to infinity, so what happens? So I want to start with a really nice example. Um, let's take the matrix A to be 0, 1, 1, 1. And let me just take my vector V to be uh, 1, 1 and see what happens to that vector. Well, let's multiply it out and see. Hopefully you've already done uh, problem sheet 1 where the, this uh, was already worked out. So um, I'm going to get 1, 2. If I apply A to that, I'm going to get 2, 3. If I apply A to 2, 3, I'm going to get 3, 5. And then the next one is going to be 5, 8, then 8, 13, etc. And what you end up with is the Fibonacci numbers. So um, let me write down a formula. So if this is the matrix A, A to the n of 1, 1 is the nth Fibonacci number and the n plus 1th Fibonacci number in a vector, where, um, let's think, I'm numbering my Fibonacci numbers in such a way that F1 is 1, F2 is 2, F3 is 3, etc. So F, F0 will also be 1. I think that's right. If my indexing is wrong here, you can complain about it in the comments. Okay, why are we getting Fibonacci numbers here? Well, let's see. We can check this by induction. Suppose it's true for you know, your favourite values of n. Uh, we've just checked it for the first five values of n. Um, what happens if we want to prove it for the next one? Well, a of fn, fn plus 1 is fn plus 1, and then fn plus fn plus 1. And now, using the recursion properties of Fibonacci numbers, the second guy is fn plus 2. So you get the next um, vector in the sequence. Okay, so what happens as n goes to infinity? Well, these numbers get infinitely large, of course, you know, they tend to infinity, but they do so in a specific way. So here's the theorem. Um, the limit as n goes to infinity of Fibonacci number n plus 1 over fn is the golden ratio 1 plus root 5 over 2 isn't that cool that's really cool I think so we're going to prove this using eigenvectors and eigenvalues so here's the proof First of all, like in the last two applications, we're going to write our vector 1, 1 as alpha u1 plus beta u2, where u1, u2 are the um, lambda 1, lambda 2 eigenvectors. of this matrix A, one, uh, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, we'll figure out what lambda 1, lambda 2, u1, u2 are later. But for now, it doesn't
doesn't matter too much. The structure of the proof doesn't depend too much on these values. So now a to the n of 1, 1 is a to the n of alpha u1 plus beta u2 that's going to be alpha a to the n u1 plus beta a to the n u2 and now we can evaluate a to the n u1 so a u1 is lambda 1 u1 so a squared u1 is lambda 1 a u1 which is lambda 1 squared u1 and more generally by induction you end up with a to the n u1 is just lambda 1 to the n u1 and the same with u2 with a lambda 2 to the n okay let me get a new page so this says a to the n 1 1 equals um, alpha lambda 1 to the n u1 plus beta lambda 2 to the n u2 and remember this a to the n 1 1 is uh, a vector of Fibonacci numbers so this is f n f n plus 1 so the claim is that um, say lambda 1 equal the golden ratio 1.618 blah 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 and lambda 2 is minus 0 0.618 so in other words this one is um, 1 plus root 5 over 2 and this one is uh, 1 minus root 5 over 2 So what happens as I raise the golden ratio to the power n? It goes to infinity as n goes to infinity because it's bigger than 1 so if you raise it to some power it's going to get bigger. Lambda 2 on the other hand well it's got a sign and the sign will flip every time I raise by an odd or even integer but ignoring that, the 0 0.618 is smaller than 1. So even though the sign is switching, this sort of 0 0.618 to the n is going to get smaller and smaller. So in the end, this, this converges to 0 as n goes to infinity. So the limit um, as n goes to infinity of f n plus 1 over f n is the limit as n goes to infinity of the slope right this is the y component of the x component so it's the limit of the slope of alpha lambda 1 to the n u1 plus beta lambda 2 to the n u2 and if you look at this the lambda 2 term is going to 0 so in the end the slope is the same as the slope of of this vector u1 well it's the slope of this rescaling of u1 but you know if you rescale a vector you don't change its slope And okay, the slope of u1 doesn't depend on n, so this is just equal to the slope of u1. So what we need to do is figure out the slope of this um, eigenvector. We also need to prove this claim about the eigenvalues. So let's do that. Eigenvalues of 0, 1, 1, 1. Well, what's the characteristic polynomial? It's debt of minus t, 1, 1, 1 minus t, which is t squared minus t plus 1, whose roots are uh, 1 plus or minus square root of uh, 
1 plus 4 over 2 which is what I said 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2 and what are the eigenvectors well 0 1 1 1 times x y equals 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2 x y means well if we multiply out this matrix we're going to get uh, y x plus y the first equation is telling us y equals 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2 x and the second equation is implied by the first so we're going to ignore it and this is exactly saying the eigenvector is of slope 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. All right, the slope is the coefficient of x in y equals something times x. In particular, the slope of the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 1 plus root 5 over 2 is 1 plus root 5 over 2. So this is the golden ratio. Okay, so that's really cool. I think that's really cool. Um, you know, this statement that the limit of the ratio of the, goal, the uh, Fibonacci numbers approaches the golden ratio appears to have absolutely nothing to do with matrices. And yet the way we've proved this uses all these nice facts about eigenvectors and eigenvalues that we've been developing for the last, uh, last few videos. So I really like this fact. There's a picture of what's happening as well. Uh, let me try and draw it. Um, so here's the eigen line for the golden ratio. So this is the direction in which u1 points. Here's the eigen line for the other eigenvector. Sorry, other eigenvalue. This is the direction in which u2 points. So you could think of this as like the u2 axis. This is like the u1 axis. So let's take a vector somewhere, v, and write it in terms of this uh, new coordinate system. So it's a uh, alpha u1 plus beta u2. What happens if I apply a to v? Well, it ends up being alpha lambda 1 u1 plus beta lambda 2 u2. So the u1 component gets rescaled by lambda 1, which is about 1.618. So we move up this axis, and the u2 component gets rescaled by minus 0.618. So we switch over to the other side of the u1 axis, and we also get closer to the u1 axis. So you end up something like here. If we apply A again, what happens? Well, again, the U1 component gets almost doubled, 1.618. And the other component, the U2 component, switches sign and gets even closer to the U1 axis. So you end up like here. And if you apply it again, you're going to end up over here getting closer and closer to the u1 axis but also further along it and and then we run out of um, out of space in the picture okay so what's happening to this vector is it's getting more and more parallel to the u1 axis but stretched out along the u1 axis so another nice example of all this is the arnold cat map that we came across in uh, earlier videos. This was the matrix A equals 2, 1, 1, 1, and its eigenvalues were um, 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2. So one of these is, let's say, lambda plus, the bigger one, is bigger than 1, and the other one, lambda minus, is less than 1, but it is bigger than 0. So we don't get this um, sign issue that we had for the Fibonacci matrix. 
Um, so here are the eigen lines. I think we drew these in an earlier video, something like this. Um, so this is the one corresponding to the, the smaller eigen eigenvalue and this is the one corresponding to the bigger eigenvalue. So let's suppose I give you a square that's kind of oriented with respect to these eigendirections. In other words, it's, it's sides are parallel to the eigen lines. And let's suppose I apply this matrix A to the square. Let's call the square S. What's the result going to look like? What is A of S? Well, things pointing in the V plus direction get um, stretched out because lambda plus is bigger than one and things in the V minus direction get squished towards the V plus axis because lambda minus is less than one. So it's going to end up looking something like this. So this is A of S. And if I apply A again, I'm going to get squished like this even closer to V plus. And as I go on, I'm going to this this rectangle is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner and it's going to get closer and closer to the eigen line V plus. So the reason this is called the Arnold cat map is this slightly strange uh, phenomenon that happens as you start applying this matrix A. So let's take um, the usual grid parallel to the X and Y planes, just the coordinate grid of squares in the plane. And I'm going to put, well, I'm not actually going to put, I'm going to invite you to imagine that I've put a picture of a cat inside each of these squares. All the same cat. Right? So the question is why a cat? I don't know because actually this Arnold cat map was investigated in the 60s before the internet so it's not like cat memes were a thing. But um, nonetheless we're going to take a picture of a cat, stick it in every square and then we're going to apply A to this whole grid of cats. And the cats are going to get stretched in some directions and squished in other directions just like this square over here. Um, and then we're going to pick our favourite square, like this little red one I'm drawing here, and we're going to look just inside that square at what we've got. And what we'll have is a bunch of cats all chopped up and stretched and squished and then stuck back into that square somehow. And then we're going to do it again. And again, from the point of view of this little red square, this configuration of chopped up, squished and um, squashed cats is just going to get more and more complicated and as n goes to infinity as we do this infinitely often you know this is going to be complete carnage but the weird thing is that at some point you end up with a picture of a cat in that square that's very strange right that somehow the weird thing is that there's no periodicity here so it's not like a to the n is the identity for some n. It's very far from it. a to the n is some kind of matrix that's squishing things very close to its eigenline. But nonetheless, there's some kind of recurrence that's saying the picture ends up looking very similar to the way it started. So this is a phenomenon called Poincaré recurrence in dynamical systems. Um, and this is just a very simple, very cool illustration of it. Um, so if you Google Arnold cat map, you know, you'll see lots of images of this or computer programs that simulate it for you. Not actually with real cats, but with pictures of them. Unfortunately, Poincaré recurrence goes far beyond anything we're going to talk about in this module. But um, it's just a kind of fun, fun illustration of some of the ideas that we've been looking at.